Mistakes that make it into the final cut of a TV episode can be a major source of embarrassment for all involved. Take the infamous Starbucks coffee cup that ended up in an episode of Game of Thrones and turned it into a sheer laughing stock. Yet sometimes a mistake actually benefits a show for one reason or another, and its inclusion is actually a net positive for both the showrunners and fans. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 mistakes that made TV shows better. Number 10. Kelso trips over in That 70s Show A mistake that made it into one of That 70s Show's earliest episodes ultimately ended up having a major impact on how one of its main characters was presented throughout the sitcom's tenure. In the first season's Christmas episode, The Best Christmas Ever, Kelso notices Laurie across the room and decides to run towards her. With a couch in the way, Kelso attempts to leap over it, yet ends up slipping on the cushions and falling forward. This was in fact a total accident, and though Ashton Kutcher quickly recovered from his trip, it took a solid 10 seconds for a visibly amused Lisa Robin Kelly to regain her own composure. It was ultimately agreed that the gaffe was funny enough to not only be kept in the episode, but also kickstart a running joke that endured throughout the show about Kelso constantly getting hurt. Number 9. Holly Goes Off Script in Breaking Bad Breaking Bad's third to last episode is generally accepted to be the series' finest hour, but one of its most emotionally wrenching moments was a pure accident and not at all in the shooting script. Near the end of the episode, Walt flees his home with his young daughter Holly in tow. He then changes Holly's nappy in a public toilet, after which she begins tearfully calling for her mama, Skylar. This causes Walt to finally come to his senses, leaving Holly at a fire station with a note containing her home address. This all feels totally organic, and yet, Holly wasn't initially supposed to say anything at all. The young actress who played Holly actually saw her real-life mother standing out of frame and, being a baby, instinctively called for her. Now, were she working with a lesser screen partner, the take could have been ruined, but Brian Cranston remained in character and reacted to his young co-star with a perfectly devastated expression. Considering how brilliantly this tees up Walt's decision to drop Holly at the fire station, it feels totally planned even though it wasn't. Number 8. Donald Trump Wants His Blue Blazer Black in Friends In the season 4 episode The One with Phoebe's Uterus, Joey shows up wearing a blue blazer, to which Chandler quickly retorts in typically sarcastic fashion, Donald Trump wants his blue blazer black. In the script, Perry was supposed to say blue blazer back, but got a little tongue-tied, yet both Perry and his co-stars managed to remain in character. Rachel mockingly asks him why would he want his blue blazer black, and best of all, Monica hilariously says, you messed it up, you're stupid. On the one hand, this skirts a fine line of being meta, yet remaining consistent with the character's established personalities, and given Chandler's unrelenting smartassery throughout Friends, it was hilarious to see him undone by his own botched wit and knocked down a few pegs in the process. Number 7. Someone Drops a Scalpel After Blake's Death in M.A.S.H. The third season finale of M.A.S.H. ended with a jaw-dropping reveal as a thoroughly traumatised Radar O'Reilly revealed that Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake was killed after his plane was shot down over the Sea of Japan. To tragically kill a beloved character off in a sitcom was virtually unprecedented when the episode aired back in 1975, and the producers decided not to tell the cast about Blake's demise until shortly before the scene was to be filmed ensuring their devastated reactions were couched in a lot of real sadness. The silent, unbroken pan across the OR at the surgeons after receiving the news is punctuated by the sound of an unknown party dropping a scalpel in the background, seemingly typifying the traumatising effect the revelation had had on everybody in the OR. Yet the background clumsiness was a genuine accident by an unknown actor, but because it so brilliantly underlined the bunny-stunned feeling felt by everybody in that room simply trying to keep doing their jobs, it was ultimately kept in. Number 6. Floor Fleeing Flasier in Frasier Much like the aforementioned Friends joke, Frasier managed to spin a verbal goof into a genuinely hilarious gag that felt totally true to the characters involved. Near the start of the season 11 episode A Man, A Plan and A Gal, Julia, Frasier and Niles are having coffee together while Niles dispenses some relationship advice to his brother. Frasier responds by referring to himself as the old fault-finding, floor-fleeing Flasier. And without missing a beat, Niles smugly replies, You said Flasier. 
This was indeed an unintended slip of the tongue on Grammar's part, yet Pierce's quick thinking turned it into a hilarious setup and payoff, followed by the pair bickering over whether or not Fraser actually knows his own name. It was all perfectly in character for the two, Niles never missing a chance to make a self-effacing correction, and Fraser's arrogant frustration at being proven wrong. Number 5. Tobias stutters while singing in Arrested Development as tightly scripted as Arrested Development is, it's also one of those comedies that gives off a strong whiff of controlled chaos, which does make sense given that it was initially conceived with an improv-heavy approach. In the show's pilot episode, we get one minor yet genius moment of unintentional character shading, when Tobias informs his family that he's decided to become an actor. After this, we see Tobias taking part in an audition where he performs the song I'm a Bad Bad Man from the classic musical Annie Get Your Gun. Though we see only a few seconds of Tobias singing, it's derailed from the very beginning when he mistimes his singing and starts stuttering. This was reportedly a genuine mistake on Cross's part, yet feels so perfectly on brand for Tobias in all of his awkwardness that it was the take the directors, Avengers filmmakers Anthony and Joe Russo in fact, felt compelled to use. Number 4. The Visible Crew Member in Twin Peaks The dreamlike logic of Twin Peaks makes it absolutely perfect for rolling with the punches and just including mistakes in the end product. Yet David Lynch took this approach to extremes few could have ever anticipated. While shooting a scene from early in the first season involving Sarah Palmer, the face of one of the show's set dressers, Frank Silver, was accidentally visible in a mirror behind her. When reviewing the take, Lynch felt that the mistake had such an eerie quality that he decided to not only keep it in the final cut, but also offer Silver another job playing the series' primary antagonist, Bob. In the hands of another filmmaker, the shot would have simply been reshot without Silver, and that would have been that, but Lynch smartly realised he struck gold here, and Silver's expressively creepy face became a major source of terror for the show's remainder. Number 3. Dean Calls Sam Jared in Supernatural in one of the final episodes in Supernatural's first season, there's an utterly ridiculous mistake which somehow made it past the actors, directors, script supervisor and editor ending up in the final episode and causing a ton of amusement among the vocal fanbase. Midway through the episode, when brothers Sam and Dean are inspecting a mysterious painting, Dean says, Jared, check it out. Obviously, Jensen Ackles meant to say Sam, check it out, yet lost himself for a moment and deferred to his co-star's real name, as fans have relished pointing out many times since the episode aired way back in 2006. Yet Supernatural hasn't ever taken itself particularly seriously, and so mistakes like this consequently feel less embarrassing than they do simply hilarious. Number 2. Alicent Breaks Character in House of the Dragon House of the Dragon's eighth episode, The Lord of the Tide, sees the royal families gather for a feast where an ailing King Viserys begs them to put their differences aside and make amends. Though the truce doesn't last long, there is a brief period of joy as the assembled party feasts and enjoys themselves. During the montage of boozy revelry, we briefly see Otto Hightower playfully clapping his hands across the table. And if you look closely, his daughter Alicent can be seen silently mouthing the words to him, stop making me laugh. This was actually a case of Actress Olivia Cook breaking character due to Reese Ifan's possibly unscripted tonfoolery, yet the director liked the moment enough to keep it in the final cut, albeit with Alicent's dialogue volume cranked way down as to be almost inaudible. If you're even remotely able to read lips though, it's clear what she's trying to say. Number 1. The Car Doesn't Start in Seinfeld Seinfeld's season 3 episode The Parking Garage is often held up as one of the series' best, yet its climactic payoff was actually a happy accident and the result of a malfunctioning prop. The episode set entirely in a parking garage sees the gang trying to track down Kramer's car in a multi-level parking garage, all while each has a time-sensitive situation they need to attend to. In the closing moments of the episode, they finally locate the car and prepare to drive off, but when Kramer turns the ignition, the engine won't start. After a few seconds of Kramer frustratedly trying to get the car started, we fade to black and that's all she wrote. Yet in Larry David's script for the episode, they were simply supposed to drive off after finding the car, but while filming the ending, the car straight up failed to start for real. If you pay close attention, you can even see Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Jason Alexander shaking with laughter in the back of the car before we cut to a wide exterior shot of the parking garage. This was such a perfect punchline to the episode-long search for the car that it seems almost impossible that it wasn't always intentional, especially coming from a writer as brilliant as Larry David, but it was indeed simply the happiest of accidents. 
And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.